missed. No, I didn't. <laughs> All right. Just stay with me. Just stay right. Hi. I'm looking for Jack Evans. Um, is he expecting you? No, it's a surprise. Okay, I'll, I'll get him. Do you want something to, to drink or? No, thank you. But leave the fly. Someone down here to see you. About 20, maybe. Kind of like a cross between Elvira and the little match girl. Yeah. Okay. So, he'll be right down. Oh. Are you a bugologist or something? No. Uh, so, you're a friend of Jack's? Yes, but I haven't seen him since I was 10. Hi, I'm Jack Evans. Can I help? Hello, Uncle Jack. Katie! 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 This is my goddaughter, Katie. <laughs> I haven't seen her since she was, whoa. 10. Just about. <laughs> I used to call her Sunshine. <laughs> Time passes. So, uh, what brings you here, Sunshine? I quit school. I thought maybe you could give me a job. Here, you, you, you want a job? And uh, maybe a, a little piece of cotton. I think you'd be more comfortable. Lie, you purse your lips. <laughs> I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Well, all right. I told Mitch that I was going to. Mitch. <laughs> Mitch. Oh, okay. All right. Two weeks now of going somewhere to see someone, and the mystery man finally has a name. Mitch. Gosh. So when do we get to meet Mitch? Never. Really. Because the last time I brought a guy around here, you and Jack cornered him in a booth until he handed over his income tax returns and his old report cards. So, no. You're not going to meet him. So you decided to take a little time off from college, huh? Actually, I've decided to spend my few remaining years unconfined by academic convention. Remaining years? Katie, uh, are you sick? We all are in a way, Jack. Life is a disease from which we never recover. W what does your dad think about this? I haven't told him yet. Hey, I haven't seen him in years. Hey, hey, here it is. Remember this? Saturday afternoon, Fenway Park. I can still hear my little sunshine yelling, kill the umpire, kill the umpire. <laughs> You, you, you always said you, you couldn't wait to grow up and go to college and study baseball. It's philosophy now. The nihilists, mostly. 
You've got spiders on your ears. You don't like my earrings? Oh, they're very striking, but... Uh... But not part of the waitress uniform? I got experience working on campus in the snack bar. Night shift. I hate to think of you not finishing college. I've learned everything I need to know, Jack. In the midst of life, we are in the midst of death. So when do I start? Nice job, Peter. Thanks. I hope Miss Tree appreciates it. If I like it, Samantha will love it. We haven't disagreed about anything since I got the top bunk at college. You two were roommates? Got jobs together right out of school, stocking at a bookstore. One day, Samantha caught me reading a romance novel and made fun of me, so I challenged her to write a better one. She challenged me back. Well, mine was so bad, it was laughable. But Samantha's just floored me. So she became the novelist and you became the manager. We're a great team. It must be nice. I mostly work alone. Oh, well, that takes a lot of discipline. Me, I'm just pushy. <laughs> hey, Peter. Take a break. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Sure. Uh, this is Miss Morgan. Hillary. Hi, Greg Tobank. You two know each other? Yeah, we're all high school buddies. Greg was the best writer in my English class. She manages novelists, Greg. It's very subtle, Peter. You must get a lot of inspiration working at the bar. A lot of interesting characters. You have no idea. <laughs> the kitchen floor can get terribly slippery, so be careful. Has anyone ever slipped and died in here? No. No one's ever died in the kitchen, Katie. Or anywhere here at Jack's, really. Although, I did once almost choke on an olive, but thank God Greg knew the Heimlich maneuver, so... Hmm. So you're living on borrowed time. Thank you so much. Hi. Could you write to Rhoda? Better luck next time. How about to Rhoda? Love still waits for you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for the book, Mark. Well, let me introduce you to Smith. Oh, no, no, no. She's too busy. No. Come on, really. Thank you. Samantha. Peter Howard. Hello, Peter. I'm sorry, I'm a little messy. Well, that's all right, so am I. Look at me. Peter is the carpenter who built the display for us. Oh, really? Oh, it's beautiful. I'm just glad you like it. Oh, <laughs> you know, I, I usually don't build stuff like this. I had to improvise a little. But when I saw you just now, it all seemed worth it. Really? Yeah, you really... The room really lights up when you... I want to have coffee. Now? Oh, no, of course, you're busy. Um, it was really nice to meet you. Uh, I saw an espresso bar down the street, so maybe we could meet there at 8. OK. Great. And then she looks right at me and says, so, then you're living on borrowed time. <laughs> I know what a laugh will cry. So, the, uh, the Heimlich maneuver, huh? Yes. Is that right, uh, is that right here somewhere? Um, I think that's definitely a Mitch maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> Darkness. <laughs> I expect she's 
He's probably holding seances at the at the bar. You know, I have to go. <laughs> I love you, work, Mitch. Yeah, thanks. Too bad it doesn't pay the rent. Oh, your chance will come. And when it does, you'll know it and take it. That's what good photography is all about, right? Luck and instinct and a lot of talent. <laughs> well, I'm just lucky to have you. Damn right. Right. Everything looks so good, I can't decide. I'm sorry it's taking me so much time. Time is really all we have. What do you mean? Well, if you want to spend your time deciding which cholesterol-laden meal you plan to consume in order to hasten your inevitable demise, I don't want to rush you. You have all night? Maybe. I'll be back. Uh, uh, she's new here. May I offer you a drink? On the house. Did you ever go to the places you write about? Like Ireland? No. I only have time to do all my traveling in libraries, reading other people's books about exotic locations. Then you add the romance. Right. That I don't need to research. Did you ever write something besides romance? Oh, I tried to write a serious novel once about women in the cutthroat world of advertising, but they kept taking long walks on the beach and visiting castles in Spain. <laughs> I guess I'll always be looking for a castle someplace. So what about you? What have you always wanted to build? Something beautiful. Something that matters. Something that'll last longer than me. I think that's why I write so many books. I'm afraid I'll be forgotten. I can't imagine anybody ever forgetting you. The yeah, laundry. Jack uses them at the restaurant all the time, and they're, they're terrible. Yeah. Well, their motto is, Le Valier Laundry loses linen. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I try to tell him. Oh, um, hold on a second. Um, it's Mitch. Actually, <laughs> now, very serious. Yeah, he's a very serious young man. You'd like him, Isabel. Now he's intelligent. <laughs> Hello, Isabel, darling. How are you? See, no, he isn't English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now about dinner. Right. Um, what is it? Oh, chicken paprikash uh, this week. Yeah. How's it? But well, I mean, it's getting rave reviews. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Bye. Impossible. Actually, I'm very possible, but we'll discuss that after breakfast. Oh, will we? <laughs> <laughs> so, who's Isabel? Oh, just a friend. She's shy. Yeah. Actually, she's more than shy. She's. What? All right. I'll tell you. If you promise not to tell anyone... I promise. It's Isabel Lang. You know Isabel Lang? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I still watch her movies in a late show. Well, she doesn't go out in public anymore, but she loves the food at Jack's, so I bring her dinner once a week. I can't believe it. The Isabel Lang. <sighs> God. Boy, I'd love to ask her how they did that mirror shot in Shadow Behind the Door. Maybe I could arrange that. Nah, I wouldn't want to intrude. But it doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be taking an awful big chance. 
Why is that? Well, Isabel Lang was the first older woman I had a crush on. First? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> so, what brings you up here, Peter? Some advice, I guess. I, I figure you're Samantha's best friend, and you know her better than anyone. I know you made quite an impression on her. Good. We're having dinner tonight, and I was hoping you might be able to suggest how I could make the evening a little more special for her. You mean how you could make yourself more special for her? Well, she must meet a lot of men. She sure does. And they're all intimidated by her. See, what guys don't realize is that sometimes strong women just want a strong man to take control. The truth is, we all dream of being swept off our feet someday. Sounds like one of her books. Exactly. Are you finished? Oh, yes. It, it was very good. We just didn't feel like eating much. Loss of appetite. One of the seven warning signs. I just came from a funeral. Really? How was it? Uh, can I see you in my office? Excuse us. I think we have to talk. Hillary says that if I want to impress Samantha, I've got to turn myself into a romantic hero, like the one she writes about. So you're reading four of her novels? No. I'm reading two, and you're reading two. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you're a writer. You can get into her head and analyze this stuff. What is there to analyze? Come on, they meet, they kiss. Uh, someone dies, someone learns to love again. Someone gets nauseous like me. No. You know that bookcase you want in your bedroom? Solid oak, glass doors. Brass hinges. OK. Yep, right. Lezinski. Leshinsky. She just uses that to throw people off, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Ah, Chelsea, darling. <laughs> you must be Mitchell. How do you do, Miss Lang? Ah, I hear you are the brightest, most fascinating, intelligent, wonderful young man left on this planet. <laughs> Heavy burden to carry, isn't it? Well, <laughs> Come on in, tea is ready. Okay. You're right with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Here you are. What's that? Um, it's bean jelly. Bean mm, jelly, okay. Yeah, it's really <laughs> nice for jasmine tea. Yes. I used to have them sent to me every year at Christmas time since 1946 through a jade dealer I met in Hong Kong. This is the last of it, I'm afraid. Mr. Kwong passed away mysteriously about a year ago. He was a very sweet man. And a fantastic tango dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel can tell us a story about every keepsake in this whole flat. It's all bad. I see, I see mementos from everywhere in the world, but nothing from Hollywood. Well, I don't believe in living in the past. That's why I have not been seen in the public eye these days. These days? No one's seen you for, what, uh, what 20 years? Longer. Oh, you look wonderful. Thank you. Have some more bean jelly. <laughs> 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 but enough about the past. I want to hear about you two. Uh... Go on. You're on, babe. No, no, no. <laughs> go ahead. Come on. You can do it. Just let go and smile. Little broader. Come on, come on. You can do it. Let go, sunshine. Come on, Katie. You're a beautiful, bright young woman who should be thinking about school and not about dancing with the Grim Reaper. What is there to smile about? With all the pain and injustice in the world? The only thing you can absolutely count on anymore is death. And taxes. <laughs> it's hard to be cheerful when you can see through the eternal curtain like I do. But if you want me to smile, 
I'll try. Now we're getting somewhere. Come on. Let go. Well, it's a start. So what'd you think? Well, I skimmed the white rose of desire and the pink rose of passion, and now I'm on your red rose d'amour. And? And I hope the woman runs out of roses soon. Come on, man, this is serious. I've got three days to make Samantha fall in love with me. Peter, this just happens or it doesn't. Not from what I can tell in these books. All of her heroes are brooding, arrogant, and selfish. But the women think that they can love these guys enough to make them change. That's why we call it fiction, Peter. Just listen. All I have to do is be one of these guys. Then Samantha might love me enough to want to change me. Then I just go back to being myself, and she'll think she did it. Peter. Hello, Samantha. I was worried about you. You're so late. No, oh, that's sweet. What are you drinking? A, a white wine. Two Russian vodkas chilled straight up with pepper. I want to drink vodka with you tonight. Actually, I don't like vodka. Well, you probably never had it this way. You look very nice tonight. Thank you. Someday I'd like to see you in red. I always thought I looked pale in red. Well, you should dress to please a man. I dress to please myself, Peter. <laughs> oh, I like your spirit. Uh, would you... Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Uh, would you like to hear our specials this evening? No. Yes, uh... Would you have the chef come out here, please? I'd like to order off the menu. Well, he... Peter, is this really necessary? Of course it is. You only get the best if you demand it. Well, while well, you're demanding the best, would you excuse me? I feel like washing my hands. Would you like to wait and order when the lady returns? She wouldn't do that. Chelsea saw her leave to the kitchen. Sorry, man. Hey, if you thought a dollar didn't... Jack's Place will continue in a moment. Never before had the stars seemed so blue, nor the night so dark. Never before had the pulsating celestial light pierced her very soul. Ow. But, but everything was different now, now that Hunter had kissed her. Hunter. <clears throat> I'm doing research. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to help Peter figure out what he did wrong last night. Well, I'll tell you what he did wrong. He behaved like an ass. Right. And I suppose your beloved Mitch never went out on a limb for love. We'll see. He wants to meet me today. He says he's got a surprise for me. Really? Maybe he found the last name. <laughs> well, you know, for your information, Mitch has a perfectly lovely last name, which you're not going to twist out of me. Tonight. Well, at least one of my waitresses is in a good mood. Huh?
Oh, she'll grow out of it. I did. No, no I do not believe you were that bad when you were growing up. Uh, there was a time when all I did was smoke, drink coffee, and write very bad poetry about dead roses. Well, at least she's not writing poetry yet. What got you to snap out of it? The first time I saw Mikhail Baryshnikov dance, mm. oh, there was something to live for. Unfortunately, I can't afford Baryshnikov. Well, even if you could, she wouldn't be interested. Why not? He's alive. <laughs> Bye. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, yeah. There's more. Oh, come on. No. <laughs> oh, wow. That's... That's beautiful. <laughs> it's the first of a whole string of them that'll go right here. That's a lovely thought. Yeah, it's more than that, Charles. A couple days can be a reality. You sold something? I got a little something cooking. I'm gonna share it with you. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so wonderful. I'm so proud of you. Oh, it's great. I'm like a jerk magnet. I have no business writing romance novels. Oh, honey, it's not you, it's them. Sam, remember my ex-husband? Men just don't like women they can't control. I just... I thought that Peter was different. I'm so sorry, Sam. Look at it this way. You only had three days to spend together, so maybe it's better you find out now what kind of guy Peter really is. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I always am. for happy birthday. Life is a journey. And birthdays are the milestones on the road to the tombstone. Is that a fly? <coughs> hmm. Just a raisin. Get her out of here. But I was smiling! Katie, you ever wonder why the Red Sox keep going? I mean, they haven't won a World Series since... I can't remember when. Since they sold Babe Ruth to the Yankees. Of course, the Babe won't be back. He's dead. But they keep going out there. No matter how bad things get, they keep going back out on that field. That is like life. Life is meaningless. You run around and around trying to cover all the bases until the game's over. We switch metaphors now. Katie, have you ever thought about going back to college? Why does this mean so much to you? I went out on the road with bands when I was, what, 18? With, with, with your dad. I didn't go to college. I always had the feeling I missed something. I don't want you to have that feeling 20 or 30 years from now. I may not even be here 20 years from now. <sighs> Katie, when I agreed to be your godfather, I promised to look after you, but I cannot continue to watch this obsession of yours. There is more to life than death. The work of our life is to lay the foundation for death. Montaigne. It matters not how a man dies, but how he lives. Johnson. The best is yet to come. Sinatra. Peter? Hey. Uh, we gotta talk, bud. It's with Samantha. Got the wood for your bookcase. Best oak you can find around here. You need to talk to her, Peter. Samantha won't even take my phone calls. I blew it. It's not your fault. Hey, come on. Come down here. 
I don't want to hear it, Greg. Trust me, this you want to hear. Table three. I think he's the guy my agent sent over. They're the one to shake up Katie. I was expecting someone a little pastier. Oh, I like it. Subtle. Harvey swears it's going to be great. Hi. Can I take your order? Hello, Katie. How did you know? I seem familiar to you. Good. I should. Do you spend enough time thinking about me? Sit down. Your dad? In the flesh. Sort of. I don't believe this. Denial. It's normal. Just listen. I don't want a cheerleader. I don't want you to like me. It's unnatural. How can you say that? You're the only thing that's meaningful in this world. Listen to me, Katie. I'm going to explain this to you in terms you can understand. Get a life. <laughs> that's it? Get a life? Plant a garden. Coach a little league team. Buy a kitty. Commit random acts of kindness. I'm not here to give your life meaning, Katie. That's your job. Hey, he's good. But Camus said, any reason for living is also a reason for dying. <laughs> That's what he used to say. You should hear him now. There's nothing romantic or sophisticated about death, Katie. It's very ugly, even under the best of circumstances. So why do you want to rush things? You're going to see me in 20 years anyway. 20 years? That's all? You see, you do care about life. Think about what I've said. And I was lying about the 20 years. I won't be seeing you again for a long, long time. Have a nice life. I wouldn't do that if I were you. We're ready to order now. Hi. I'll be your waitress this evening. Hey, you go to Williams? Yeah, so does she. Hi, I'm Katie. What's your major? Well, I haven't decided yet. I'm just in the first year. Like liberal <laughs> arts or something? Yeah, I think that. Hi, you've reached the home and studio of Mitch Adams. Please leave a message after the tone, and I'll call you back. Mitch, this is Fred Loomis, photography editor of the National Tattler. Uh, you talked to my assistant this morning. Listen, Mitch, if you've got a picture of Isabel Lang, we want it. Uh, I don't know if you've uh, contacted any other tabloids yet, but Mitch, we'll make it worth your while. So call me first, OK? <laughs> What's wrong? What, what is wrong? Okay, okay, okay. So I snuck a miniature camera into her place and I took one picture when she wasn't looking. One. Oh, that's all it takes, hey, Mitch. I, I was gonna tell you. When? What do you mean you were gonna tell me what when her picture was splashed all across the sleuthing tabloids? Come on, you saw her face. 
I mean, it's obvious that she misses the spotlight. I mean, I think subconsciously she really wants this. Tell me you're doing this for her. No, no, I'm doing this for us. Look, I think we got something together, Chelsea. Don't involve me in this. Doing it for yourself. I still have the negative. Who are you? How could you be so cruel, Charles? A few days ago, you were telling me about luck, about instinct and talent, and you were telling me that I would take the chance when I saw it. Well, I saw it, and my instinct said take it. I never meant that. I never told you to hurt someone. Hey, when you've got to watch every dime you make for years to do what you have to do. Now, $10,000 is going to buy me a lot of film. I'm not ashamed of myself. You're not? No, I'm not. Well, I am. I'm ashamed of myself. Oh, I don't know what I ever saw in you. Chills. The tabloids descended on this place like a plague of locusts. They all heard the same rumor, that someone had tracked Isabel laying down here and had snapped a picture of her. They tried to coax her out of the house, ask her questions, take her picture. Of course, the poor woman just stayed inside with the blinds drawn. You know how she feels about privacy. I know. She called me, I called the police, and they had to clear a path for her to get out. Isabel Lang sneaking away like a common criminal. Is she all right? Well, she seemed really shook up. Can you give me her new address? Oh, honey, she didn't even tell me where she was going. I guess she just can't trust anyone anymore. Yes, the manuscript's all done. Hillary, you can read it on the flight, and then we'll drop it off as soon as we get to New York. OK. I, I, OK, I'll see you in the lobby. Bye-bye. Peter? Peter. You built me my castle. I wanted you to remember me as a carpenter. I can't believe she would do this. She's my best friend. That's why I believed her. She said you wanted a hero. I thought she ought to know. What I write about isn't always what I want. I create fantasy. I live life. There's a big difference. I was trying to be romantic. You don't have to try. You are. Building this castle for me, that was more romantic than anything I've ever written. I'll be right back. This is the bar tickets from today. Thank you. Whoa, whoa. Something wrong? No, uh, nothing's wrong. Le Valier Laundry. Le Valier Laundry. Yeah, remember I told you three weeks ago that they keep giving us short count on tablecloths? Well, now they're short again and we don't have enough to go round. This is not about missing linen. Oh, you know, Mitch, 
I wish I just brought him in here for you to meet because then maybe you would have seen through him, you know, and, and just kind of talk some sense into me. Okay. Just start from the beginning. Where's your luggage? We'll be late. Would you excuse us for a moment, please? Thank you. What is going on? I think you know. I don't know, Sam. This is no time for 20 questions. We have a plane to catch. You lied to Peter. You tried to push us apart. Do you think I would ever do anything to jeopardize your happiness? I don't think you know what happiness is. I think making the Christmas pre-sales deadline is the happiest you get all year long. Samantha, all I have ever done was think about your career. It always came first. Well, maybe that's the problem. Maybe you should have thought about me. Sorry. Sorry. I just got scared. I was afraid you were going to do the wrong thing. I think you were afraid I was going to do the right thing. OK, I was worried that Peter would interfere with your work. But more than that, I thought you were going to get hurt. I mean, you, you just met this guy, and you were walking on air already. Three days is just not enough to make big decisions like that. You read my first novel in one day and made the biggest decision of our lives. Touché. You take care of so much for me, Hillary. But I can take care of my heart. Forgive me. Always. I swear to the picture's authenticity and state that no other prints or negatives exist. Sounds good to me, Mr. Flavio. Well, you came through with the money first, so I guess the rest of those tabloids are going to have to... <laughs> Read them and weep, huh? Yeah. The negatives. Thank you. All right. Pleasure doing business with you, Mitch. Mine too, Mr. Flavio. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, Fran Barker, and new accounts, please. Fran, hi. It's Greg Toback. Yeah, I was in the bank yesterday, and I opened a, an account for Flavio Publishing. Yeah, could you just close that account for me? Well, I, I changed my mind. I'd like you to stop payment on that check. Just tear up the paperwork. I'd appreciate that. No, thank you. Bye. Thank you. You really are the best, you know. It's part of my job description. Thank you. I just wish I hadn't lost a friend over it. You still got at least one. <laughs> one that never said I told you so. <clears throat> Lavalier laundry. 54 tablecloths. No. No, no, I... Look, you're short again. We need 60 tablecloths. Every week this happens. Listen, 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 lady. Lady, I just lift and carry. Now, you got a problem, you're gonna have to talk to my supervisor. I'll Fine, good. This has gone on long enough. What are you doing here? 
Yeah. Well, when you hide out as long as I have, you get pretty good at sneaking around. Oh, I was so worried. Well, I had to move so fast. I didn't have time to let you know where I was. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's all my fault. Oh, Chelsea. We take chances on people. Sometimes they disappoint you. Doesn't mean you have to blame yourself. <laughs> well, here's my new address. And one more thing. Six tablecloths, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, come on, we get more. <laughs> Wouldn't you give This is Charles Gibson. And Joan London. Tomorrow, author Betty Rollin on life after breast cancer. Also a rare interview with designer Giorgio Armani, Richard Gere, and Jody Foster. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. Now stay tuned for Prime Time.